With return-based style analysis, what we're going to do is we're going to take the manager's portfolio and what we're going to do is we're going to regress. Let's say for a single period, we're going to regress the portfolio's returns against the returns on several indices. And now the indices that we select are going to be market indices, obviously. So we're going to select market indices that are supposed to capture our portfolio manager's style. All right, so let's talk about return-based style analysis first. And again, we can do return-based style analysis for a single period initially or over multiple periods, but let's focus on a single period. What is return-based style analysis supposed to do? What we're supposed to do is we're supposed to look at that portfolio manager's returns on that portfolio for a single period and then regress, okay? We're gonna regress his returns on the returns of several indices, okay? Several indices meaning market indices. And when we select the security indices that we're gonna use in the regression, we wanna make sure that those indices are mutually exclusive and that they are mutually exhaustive. When we say that, they have, that the indices have to be mutually exclusive of one another, we mean that those indices should not capture the same exposure more than once. In other words, we don't need two small cap value indices. So they should not be capturing the same exposure. And we also say that the indices should be mutually exhaustive in the sense that all of the manager's exposures are going to actually be represented represented and each of those if you will um, each of those exposures are going to have uncorrelated sources of risk now if we don't consider the indices to be mutually exclusive and mutually exhaustive and they don't have these characteristics then again what we conclude from the return based style analysis can many times be misleading so what we're going to do is let's say we have a a, a particular portfolio manager Okay, and we're going to regress the returns of this manager's portfolio against four market indices. A small cap value index, a small cap growth index, a large cap value index, and a large cap growth index. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to actually regress his returns against these four market indices. And again, once we actually do the regression, we regress his returns against the returns on these four different indices we're gonna come up with regression coefficients. And the regression coefficients that we come up with, these partial regression coefficients, these little betas, they're gonna represent the portfolio's exposure to a specific asset class, like large cap value, small cap value, uh, uh, large cap growth, small cap growth, okay? And all of those regression coefficients, B1, B2, B3, B4, are all gonna to have to be positive, meaning non-negative, they have to be positive, and all of the regression coefficients are gonna to have to sum up to one. Again, these are the constraints that we need to keep in mind as we do this. So if you look now at the screen, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna say, okay, let's label this as small cap value, SCV, that's small cap value, small cap growth, we're gonna have large cap value, LCV, and large cap growth. So SCV will be small cap value, SCG will be small cap growth, LCV will be large cap value, and then LCG will be low, um, large cap growth, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to regress the returns of our manager's portfolio against these four indices. And we're gonna have an index to represent each of these four, if you will, uh, asset class, uh, four of the, each of these four styles, okay? And let's say we run the regression and here's what we get from the regression. We get that the return on our portfolio is gonna be equal to some intercept B sub zero. And then we're going to have these regression coefficients, B sub one, if you will, large cap value, plus B sub two, small cap value, plus B sub three, small, uh, large cap growth, plus B4, large cap value. Oops, let me just do that. We got large cap value, small cap value, large cap growth, and small cap growth, okay? Okay, so that's what we have. B sub zero plus B1 times large cap value plus B sub two, small cap value, plus B3, large cap growth, and plus B4, small cap growth. 
Okay? And then when we look at each of the regression coefficients, we're going to say that, okay, um, we're going to say that small cap value, which is B2, B2 has a value of 0.75. And we're going to also say that large cap value, B sub 1, has a value of 0.25. Okay? And then the other ones, large cap growth, is going to have a value, regression coefficient of 0. And B sub 4, for small cap growth, is going to have a value of 0 as well. So what we could see from these values is that our portfolio manager, based on his regressing his returns on these four indices, we could see that this, in, that this portfolio manager is a value investor. And he has, he has basically investments in large cap value and small cap value securities. So again, from the value of the regression coefficients, we can again conclude that our manager has no exposure if you will, to growth stocks. He doesn't have any kind of exposure to large cap growth or small cap growth. And he's primarily a value manager. And he's primarily a small cap value manager because B sub 2 is equal to 0.75. But he does have some kind of exposure to large cap value as well. Okay, So he's primarily a small cap value manager with some exposure to large cap value stocks. So that's what we can do here. Now, one of the things that you need to realize is that when we regressed the portfolio's returns for this manager against these four indices, we did this over a single period of time, okay? And this was a previous period of time. So this is not a good methodology for capturing style drift because this is looking at the relationship in a past period and since that time period what could the portfolio manager have done? He could have shifted from, if you will, small cap value to small cap growth or some other thing because we're not looking at the current portfolio. That's where holdings based style analysis comes into play.